I'm in a garden right in the middle of London. Oh, it's very nice, nice and big, but it's unremarkable. There must be score gardens very similar to this within a half a mile. But if this garden could speak, what stories it could tell. It could tell us about the great city that rose up around it and how it became the center of a mighty empire. It would be in a unique position to tell us about a country at war, from the threat of Napoleonic invasion to IRA bombs. And it could tell us the stories of the people who lived and visited here, from the first owner who spied for Oliver Cromwell to the Iron Lady with a passion for roses and the American president who cooked a barbecue on its lawn. I believe that gardens are every bit as important as the buildings we live and work in. And if we can unearth their secrets and listen to their stories, we get a unique insight into our history and what makes us the people that we are today. In this series, I will show not just how gardening has changed over the last four centuries, but discover why these changes have occurred and who has driven them. And there she is. He's an artist, I guess. Yeah. Although you bet he never saw himself like that. I shall be exploring the gardens of the 17th century. This is grand, isn't it? I shall be working with tools of the period to discover just how gardens of the 1600s were maintained. I'll be getting 400-year-old inside information. This is showing you how to lay out your string lines and oh, then you build it up and build it up. And a long-lost garden will reveal the secret symbols of our forebears' religious beliefs. Am I reading this right? That what we're looking at is... It's a labyrinth. <laughs> Labyrinths were a popular feature in many gardens of the 16th and early 17th century. Tresham's Labyrinth was over a mile in length and designed to be walked as an act of contemplation, the journey representing the tortuous but true path of the Catholic through life and on to heaven. Letters have been found that reveal that Tresham lined what he called his circular beds, but which we now know to be a labyrinth, with white roses and raspberry plants. The raspberries would have symbolized the blood of Christ roses, the purity of the Virgin Mary. Now, with the help of an aerial photograph and a lawnmower, we can once again reveal Tresham's 400-year-old horticultural expression of faith. It's a fascinating insight into the hidden messages that lie below the surface of these gardens.